Hey there, welcome to the Eurostep, a Milwaukee Bucks podcast, proudly a part of the Blue Wire Podcast Network and GSPN, and even more proudly presented by Prize Picks. I am one of your hosts, Ty Windish. I am joined as always by the uh, flummox, Rohan Kadi. And I want to say up top, GSPN, we've been doing a good job at the family friendly podcast, the PG podcast. And I fear with the Bucks losing their fourth straight game and uh, what, six of seven, is it now, or something like that? Um, this podcast will not be one of those podcasts. So, you know, if you got us out loud at work or something like that, just just be warned. But I think if, you know, if people around you are aware of the state of the Bucks, I think they'll get it. Um, this shit fucking sucks. Rohan, how's yeah. it going? Yeah, I mean, it's 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 bad. It sucks. Like, yeah. this is... This is bad. Let me let me tell you a little story, uh, everyone. Anti. Um, so this past week, I was in Washington D.C. Right, and I went to go see the Wizards play the Portland Trailblazers. Because one thing I like to do when I'm visiting a city is go uh, and uh, you know check out their basketball team. And I was watching Wizards Blazers, and it was some of the worst basketball I've ever seen in my entire life. I was watching in the later stages of the fourth quarter. I was watching the Wizards claw their way back after being down double digits to the Blazers. And I was like, oh, my God, we get a close game. And then the Blazers are constantly up two. So what does Jordan Poole do? Every single possession is just go cross up and shoot a three. Every single possession. I'm like, this is some dog shit fucking basketball right here. <laughs> and you know what I was thinking? This team beat the Bucks. <laughs> And yeah. I'm just, it made me so depressed because I was watching literally some of the most horrendous basketball. It's Blazers, Wizards in April where both teams want to lose, are incentivized to lose time. Yeah. And I'm watching this and all I can think of is, wow, this Wizards team beat the Bucks pretty recently. And I think that's very indicative of the state of the Milwaukee Bucks right now is that it's bad. It's really bad. They've lost four straight. They lost three straight to the Wizards, the Grizzlies, and the Raptors. Three teams who are actively trying to lose, who are actively trying to improve their lottery odds. And you know what they say? They say, what what does anything matter in regards to the Milwaukee Bucks? Because they have Damian Lillard, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Obviously, Dame missed two of those games. But it's it's a team that wants to contend, wants to be a, uh, in the mix for a title this year. And you know what? They're trying to lose. Doesn't matter. The Bucks are trying to lose, too. At least that's what it feels like right now. Because nothing seems to be clicking on any single facet. Every, sing every single facet of the Milwaukee Bucks does not work right now. They do not seem like a team that is ready for the postseason. They do not seem like they're a team that would... They're not ready for the regular season. I was going to say, they're not even ready for the play-in. They would not... I don't think... I think they lose, lose the play-in if it started right now. they play -in, absolutely they would. It is a team that is dysfunctional at every single level. I know you were tweeting about this on uh, X.com, as you always do, yeah. about how the, the Bucks every <laughs> – I wouldn't say that. Uh, no one is safe in this organization aside from Giannis. I mean, yeah. it's just it's, – it's a total failure on every single level, on every single level. If you want to say – from the players to the coaching to the front office to every single person involved. You know what? I'll do it too. Everyone else seems to do it. From the equipment managers. They're yeah. messing it up travel too. Team, the yeah. travel team. They suck. Away. They suck. It's nothing works, Ty. Nothing works. This is a team where we came in to this season thinking, wow, this team has a chance to be so elite. They have the potential to be one of the greatest basketball teams we have ever seen. And what do they do? They might not even get to 50 wins. They have to win three of their last four games to get to 50. I don't think that's going to happen. No. I don't think it's going to happen. Two, two against Orlando, one against Boston and OKC? Yes. So funny that OKC is one of them. That OKC game, the high point of the Bucs season, Jordan and I record after it. And Am I the not, bad omen? No, they have not played. No, because I'm sick of every excuse. I'm not buying any Bucks excuse anymore. I don't want to hear any of it. Like, oh, Chris missed some time. Too bad. Yeah, I mean, you know, they weren't healthy. They didn't have the big three for those three games. Against the worst teams in the league actively trying to lose. I don't care. If you have one of the big three, you should beat that team handily. And yeah, you're going to drop a game here or there. Not four in a row. I mean, the Knicks obviously are better, but the Bucks were supposed to fight harder. And I feel like the biggest problem with this Bucks team, they have no dog. 
They have zero dog. We thought it was there when Pat Bev came onto the scene. He's been hurt. But even after like that initial energy of like the newness, they lost it again. And I feel like if you trace this Bucks team back throughout the whole year, and I'm saying year, not season for a reason, they were losing it at the tail end of the Bud tenure. They blame Bud for that and fire Bud. They uh, have a really weird disjointed off again, but then or on again, and then largely off again tenure at the end of the Adrian Griffin, uh, at the end of his tenure. They fire him. They're good for like two games. Then they're bad for the last one or two fronty games. Doc comes on board. They had the tough road trip. Okay, we're healthy. We kind of clicked it out. We're playing super hard for, what, a week? Two weeks? And now here we are again, where it's like, no, no one's boxing out. No one's getting rebounds. No one on offense is working at all. I mean, this team has the worst offensive habits for a team with Damon Giannis you could ever imagine. They will go five minutes of not going to the paint at all. A Giannis fade away with 20 seconds on the shot clock. Why ever? Why ever would you do that? Or, you know, all right, let's pass around the elbow three times and someone jacks up a semi-open three who is probably one for four on the night from deep. It's like the way they play is just stupid. It's very stupid and it's undisciplined. And defensively, I mean, guys get past the first layer of defense like it's, I don't even know, the resistance of like like a body of water when you jump in it. Like none. You're just through it immediately. And obviously they don't have great perimeter defenders, but... So much of this, I think, is just a mix of discipline and just energy, effort. The old Jason Kidd, double E's. Uh, Maybe he was right. He was right. I mean, listen, he was right in that you need those things. He was right in that the coach can't. Listen, I'm questioning everything at this point, you know? I'm not saying he was right in everything he said. But clearly, if the team doesn't care, you're not going to do well. And that's why, you know, we're going to get into Doc. I think Doc has done a poor job, a very poor job. And it's concerning that. The, like he says the right things and the Bucks don't do Does he say the worse. right things? He has. <laughs> in terms of on court strategy things, he said the right things. Yes. All, all, Damon Giannis. We want Damon Giannis. We need all the actions with Damon Giannis. We need to simplify everyone's role. And you watch the game and Damon Giannis barely interact. Okay, so what are we what are we talking about? That that's what pisses me off about Doc is he's a talker. Talk, 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 talk. What's happening? I'm taking notes about we're not serious on the road. Coach of the team. Do something. You're like you're, it's, it's like you're the head coach of the team. He's, he's, writing, a, he's writing a book. Like, no, do, do it. Just do it. Uh, yeah, I thought Giannis should have been pulled out of the game. Pull him out of the game. You're the coach. You, you do the rotation, Doc. That's you. Uh, it's just beyond frustrating. And, and now we get all these freaking Bleacher Report graphics about Doc Rivers quotes. And all I'm thinking is, man, how did we know where this is my team, man? I, just, uh, I am starting to wonder how much of it was... Maybe Bud. maybe Adrian Griffin would have done better. I am starting to wonder how much of it was Bud and how much of it was Griffin and how much of it was just this team has a shitty energy and a shitty attitude, and they don't care. They don't play like they care. They have not for more than one week all year. And you can point out the better record under Griffin. They were winning 110-108 to 108 over the Washington Wizards after Tyus Jones put on a master class. And they're back there. Isaiah Hartenstein was eight for nine, and they had no answer. A fine player. A fine player. Isaiah Hartenstein against Giannis and Dame is putting you away. He put them away in this game. That's just, that's sad. They're down. They're down horrendous. And I think, again, I want to make it clear. I'm not saying Doc is the victim here. He will say that enough for everyone. But I do think, like, this, this team's problems go far beyond Doc. Oh, absolutely. This is a systemic issue. Like, it truly is. Like I was, I was thinking about this um, because it was. I, I was thinking like it, it would be so funny to, to me if the Bucks lose three three games against the Wizards, the Grizzlies, and the Raptors, and then go beat the Knicks because that's classic Bucks, right? And I was thinking, what what do you mean that's classic Bucks? What do you mean that's, that's classic Bucks? Uh, but also, that's been a system wide thing for like a decade now. It doesn't matter if it's Eric Bledsoe, Drew Holiday, Damian Lillard. It doesn't matter. If it's Jason Kidd, Joe Prunchy, Adrian Griffin, Doc Rivers, it doesn't matter about any of that. It's the Giannis and Chris Bucks. That's what this. That's yeah. what this team is. Those are the two consistencies. I guess the Pat and Brooke Bucks too, aside from the Jason Kidd uh, era. But it's just that core plays like this. It's so. It's so frustrating to me. It's so frustrating to everyone. I'm mean, I'm not just me, obviously, 
But yeah. it, it, it's just frustrating in general because you see how much talent that this team has. You see how much talent this team has had for years and years and years. And you think, wow, they really underperformed. They underperform year in, year out. And it's just, it's so annoying. This it's, is a new low, though. It's a new low, considering you have one of the greatest pairings in NBA history, theoretically. Because I can't yeah, even say, I can't. Only in theory. Only in theory. Uh, I saw you tweet about this as well. You don't do yeah, the that Dame trade me. again. That, that brings me, I was going to ask you, I thought you might still want to do it. I don't think I do. My response was, hell no, I wouldn't. And a lot of people are pushing back. And I think actually, you know what? I think I still do. I think I still do. I, with, without hindsight, I, I'm not trying to retcon my own position on this. I celebrated the trade. I made a video with thighs showing on my honeymoon. I was so excited about it. Like, I'm not here to lie and say at the time, I was like, this is a bad idea. It didn't work. And I think I, I will push back worse. on that. I will, I will push back on that because... This is not the final result of the trade. Do you think they're going to be better the older he gets? I mean, with more and time, more, you don't know. I'm, all I'm saying, all I'm saying is that it's, gets. all I'm saying is it's not conclusive. Sure, uh, that's fair. That's fair. I I think they're a lot better this year with Drew instead of him. I think they have an identity. They just don't have an identity. They 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 it was offense, and then the offense kind of fell apart, and they fired their coach and. They tried to make it defense. They had a good defense for like two weeks, and now they can't contain anyone, and their offense is abysmal. I mean, I, I don't know where it's at statistically over this stretch. Probably very poor. But again, given the pieces, even that were not fully healthy, I mean, this isn't like a, an offensive juggernaut team. Their identity isn't offense right now. They don't have one at all at the moment. It was kind of offense earlier, and they were a great offense, but still not like the number one offense in the league. And they were playing horrible teams. Yeah, I, I would not also, I mean, there's the whole like lack of flexibility, which they, they have, that's a coaching thing now too. I mean, as we talked about the downside of Doc, you know, having you over a barrel mid season is, I would assume he'll be back next year. I mean, there's no salary cap on coaches. He got that but, full four year deal with that. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're, he's coming back next year. Yeah. Um, there is, I mean, listen. There's no salary cap on coaches if they really wanted to, but I, I have to imagine he is back. Um, but you're you know down another pick plus whatever, and you know Grayson and Drew would have been expiring this year. That would have been interesting, but I think you have less flexibility than you did. And I just think on court, I, I think you would have been better with Drew. All the issues we talked about with Drew, I mean the roster would have made more sense around him. That's for sure. And I think absolutely it would have because this entire roster was put together in the offseason before the Damian Lillard trade. And I know we've talked that to death. Like, would, yeah. would Wes Matthews still on the be, still be on the team? Probably. Would Malik Beasley be on the team? Maybe not. Like, that, that's, that's the sort of thing that happens uh, if, if you make the Damian Lillard trade earlier rather than later in the offseason. It's, yeah. it's just, it's such a tough... It's such a tough situation. I don't envy John Horst in that situation. Obviously, you make that trade, and we're not gonna we're not gonna go and do a full retrospective about it yet. I mean, we might this summer. Who knows? Uh, but sorry to just put that on you right away. <laughs> no, I mean that's uh, I, yeah. I mean, I think you have to be concerned now about the real big shoe dropping this summer. Yeah. The. I don't know what size shoe Giannis wears. I'm sure probably like a size do. 25 or something. See, it's pretty big, um, and I've seen a lot of like, oh, the Dame trade is worth it because of the extension. It doesn't really matter. No, we all know how this goes, um, and I'm obviously not reporting and not trying to be. And I, uh, I, 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 I want. Have... I don't think that happens. I don't. I, don't I, think tr it happens, I truly but, don't. I mean, we were worried about it last summer after how bad things ended. We're on track to end maybe even sadder and older. Is it possible to end sadder than last year? Yeah. I you think get so. swept instead of I five? Mean, I mean, if Giannis is healthy and you lose in the first round, that's sadder. Yeah. Relatively healthy. He's dealing with something right now. And again, it's like. Not I according to Doc. He said he's healthy. Yeah. He also said he wasn't. We're not going to play him his full minutes the rest of the season. He played 38 and a half minutes and they pulled everyone with one minute left. Like, he's just talking. He just talks. He does just talk a lot. Likes the way he sounds. Like, 
Good for him. Uh, join us back on the pod circuit soon, but oh Christ. It's just <sighs> this team is so disappointing, Ty. I know we even talked like about this Knicks game or anything in general, but it's just it's so disappointing when you look at the the grand scheme of things. Like the playoffs start in what? Less than, they start in less than two weeks. Yep. They start in 13 days. This team is not ready for the postseason. They're truly not. It doesn't matter who they play. It doesn't matter anything. They could play the freaking Washington Wizards, and I don't. I wouldn't feel confident going into a series. Yeah, I think the the issue is they, they cannot play a full game of basketball. And again, outside of that Thunder game, they have not been able to. And you look at this game reminded me a lot of that Lakers game. First half was great. And yes, you lose a lot when Chris Middleton goes out. But yes, that is something lose. we did not mention. Chris Middleton left that uh, the New York Knicks game due to mouth trauma after just what Horrible. a wild way, to, wild way to put Horrible. it. Um, just just got clocked in the face by uh, old friend Dante DiVincenzo. Old friend, new enemy. He punked the Bucks in the fourth quarter. Um, did not look like Kevin Hart in the All-Star game this time. Looked like uh, a good player in the All-Star game. But it's one of my favorite hurts. Bucks Twitter lore. I know. Um, Chris plays 13 minutes. The Bucks win those minutes by four. Uh, and he goes out. You Obviously, you miss that. But the Knicks are without Julius Randle. You have a, a sizable lead at halftime. What was it, like eight, nine points, something like that? Or was it, it not? Was, no, it, was, it? it was a nine-point or 11-point lead at half. Milwaukee 61, New York 50. Oh, yeah. 11-point lead at half. They immediately lose it in the third quarter. And it was because, and they gave up a lot of points in that quarter too, but the offense just died. And the offense cannot just die without Chris Middleton out there. And this is an empirical true statement because you're not going to have the big three out there for 48 minutes. You can't only be good if you have all of your stars out there. And that's been a Bucks issue for a while now, much less when they just have one of them. Those lineups have greatly struggled. And it's because it feels like no one outside of Giannis and sort of Dame can get to the rim ever which is problematic, and they don't really have a solve for that. Even the younger players, like A.J. Green, not exactly a you know master rim guy, and Andre Jackson Jr. is actively afraid of it. And no one else can get there, which bogs them down when the shots aren't Brooke falling. Brooke Lopez tries. He might be top three on the ro- rotation in terms of getting to the rim. He probably is in terms of drives per game. No, he's probably just out. If, well... I think the big three would be ahead of him. Pat Connaughton probably is. I don't know who else drives more per game than Brooke, to be honest with you. It's just, it's so, it's so depressing when you actually kind of say that out loud. I go, at least he tries. Good on him for trying to do something. Um, but they're just stuck in, in the mud in such a horrible way, and it just feels like they don't have any presence without Giannis. Like, if Giannis isn't, lifting them up literally on his shoulders and taking them to the rim, they don't get there and their offense stinks. And it's just, like, not sustainable. And part of that is the ongoing, like, hey, is Dame ever going to play like a superstar for more than, like, a quarter? Four for 11 in this game. Ends with 23 points, six assists, four very costly turnovers. 14 of those points are at the foul line. Like, makes four shots in 38 minutes. Just not enough. One for seven from deep. And I, I, I'm not trying to kill Dame, and I'm not the, like it's not just Dame. Obviously, there are issues, but the Dame era has sucked, and I think a sizable part of that has been whether it's fit, whether it's the off court stuff, whether it's dealing with injuries, whatever you want to attribute it to. He's not been that superstar player the Bucks thought they were getting. No, and just to just to put a cap on our our last conversation in terms of drives per game, it goes Giannis, Dame, Chris, Pat. Bev, Pat Connaughton, Beasley, Portis, Lopez. I would not have imagined Bees has more. Yeah, he's averaging 2.2 drives per game. Thank you. According to are, NBA stats. NBA stats. What and not including, not including this Knicks game. They have oh, yeah. Brooke at 1.6, but I would imagine that's trending up. Let me check after the All-Star break. Um, we love a good stat, Paul. Yeah, post All Star, it goes Dame, Dame, Giannis, Chris, Pat Bev, Pat Conson, Bees, Portis, Lopez. Yeah, they're definitely missing Pat Bev too. But again, like if you need Pat Bev on offense and defense, you're in a pretty bad place. Yeah, it's very bad. 
I just can't. I can't really figure out how this happened. Right. It's like it's it's so many things went into it, but you don't know exactly where it went wrong. Right. Like you can you can attribute it to like signing some players in the offseason, trading away some players. Obviously, the Damian Lillard trade, not being able to really replicate Grayson Allen's production. Uh, Drew Holiday's perimeter defense. You have the trade deadline. You have Adrian Griffin. You have Doc Rivers. You have Giannis. Uh, Giannis, but you have Chris and his injury. There's so many factors playing into this that you don't really know which one really made the difference, right? I do it's think so, a lot of it is just age sneaking up on the whole roster. I wouldn't even say that. Like, wh- what would you attribute that age to besides Brooke? I mean, I think Crowder and Pat Connaughton are both worse than they were, certainly two years ago. I mean, Pat C didn't have a good last regular season. I still think he's in a lot of the right spots, but that just doesn't not, really yeah. help when you're, you're you're in the right spot defensively and you get blown by again, or you're in the right spot on offense, but you miss another three or get blocked at the rim. Like, I think a lot of their role players have... Like, who, oh, first of all, Pat, who do you think you are trying to dunk on Mitchell Robinson, by the way? Who I do you, had it too. Who do, I mean, so did I. But also, who do you think you are? The audacity. The audacity from Pat Connaughton. Just because you participated in a slam dunk contest doesn't mean you're a contact dunker. And God Get God. out of here. Get out of here with that. I, I feel like at least he's he is one of the few guys on the roster where I'm like, he's actively like really trying to win games. He obviously is not. He's not. It's not like, working. He's not able to it's do not it. Work. I don't know if you've noticed, Ty. The Bucks are losing games. I have noticed. I have noticed. You know who else has been losing, Rohan? Oh, don't say you on Prize Picks. Me on America's number one fantasy sports app with more than three million members. Prize Picks. Our friends and partners. This is exactly like. Have you seen the? Uh, is it what Eli Manning and Carmelo commercial? Yes, the uh, the the beer commercial. When you can't buy a bucket, yeah, you got to get a bucket of uh, insert beer. Who sponsors us here? Hit my line, hit my DMs uh, to make that happen. But speaking of our great sponsors, Prize Picks, you just pick more or less on two or more player stats and watch the winnings roll in. I've gone cold. You know, I keep trying baseball, and I keep not winning it's more in fun. baseball. <laughs> Well, it's more. It, listen, watching baseball has been more fun. Playing prize picks is fun, no matter the sport. But baseball, this was Wednesday's Brewers game. I I come so close to just getting totally blanked every time. Carlos Correa less than six point five hitter fantasy score. He had seven. The Twins had some success uh, hitting the ball. Willie Adamas more than two and a half bases. Zero. If I take a player's more than bases, they're not. I'll tell you what, you should have done it Sunday uh, against the Mariners. I should have. Is it an unwritten rule to not hit a homer on a position player? So that's stupid. Maybe be better and don't have an outfielder throwing pitches. And then Christian Yelich had more than. What are you supposed to do? Just strike out? I don't know. The baseball is silly. More than eight and a half hitter fantasy score. He had three. That was not a great day for the crew, but today was. Shout out to Cruising for a Bruising. Uh, Check them out if. Want to hear about a happier sport, but yeah, I'm uh need to step out of it. On I'll tell picks. you what, I'll tell you about my picks that I made you today dub? for this Knicks game. I uh, close, uh, so I did a flex play. I had five five picks uh, here. I like a flex play. Oh yeah, so I had Damian Lillard more than twenty and a half points. That was good. Got there. <clears throat> uh, yep, ended with twenty three. Giannis Antetokounmpo more than thirty two and a half combined points and assists. Got to thirty six. Uh, Jalen Brunson more than seven assists. He had eight. Uh, Isaiah Hartenstein, uh, more than five and a half rebounds. Uh, that was a goblin, so that was a... Oh, a little easier. Yeah, so that got there. He had 10. And then Malik Beasley, more than nine and a half points. He had nine. Oh, so close. Well, that's still a win for you on the flex point. It though, is. I got, I got the, the money that I put on that. I got back, so it was a 1x payout on that, so I did not, uh, did not lose. I did not win. I did not lose. I like the flex plays. I like everything Prize Picks has to offer. So make sure if you haven't already, download the app today, the Prize Picks app. Use code Eurostep for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. It is so easy to just pick more or pick less, and you can do so on us. We'll match your first deposit up to a hundred bucks with code Eurostep on the Prize Picks app. So check out Prize Picks. Thank you to Prize Picks for sponsoring. Uh, Eurostep, Win in Six, and all of GSPN's Milwaukee Bucks podcasts. Well, that was fun. Back to the Bucks now. 
I mean, it, something not yell, fun. Do yeah? Do we yell more or do we like? Let's I talk, mean, Doc. I, oh yeah, okay, uh, yeah. Let's talk, Doc. So this guy, he, you go, because I, I feel like I yelled about Doc for a bit already. He'll he'll talk a lot of stuff, right? We talked about this earlier on the episode. He'll talk. He'll make those Bleacher Report graphics, which, by the way, I just they're they're funny. It's so funny when it's not happening to your team. It's so funny when it's not happening to your team. Unfortunately, Doc Rivers is the coach of the Milwaukee Bucks. I get jump scared every time I see him in a press conference. Uh, congrats to everyone who took a victory lap on Doc Rivers being hired. Uh, it's just good, great job, great job, everyone. Um, it hasn't worked out. It, it truly hasn't worked out. There have been so many instances where we've seen that, like you mentioned earlier, Ty, we have not seen the cohesion. We have not seen the the fit work out as well as we had hoped and to the way that Doc talks about it. He talked a lot, like you mentioned earlier, about how he wants to see more Giannis and Dame actions. He wants to see those two fit more as a duo, be that elite duo they're supposed to be. It doesn't work. The rotations sometimes don't work. Uh, if you thankfully he doesn't throw out the all bench lineups out there uh he just throws his rookies under the bus andre jackson jr uh coming out after the the raptors game where he was inserted and made such a great just a great impact on that game he got the double up stock for that game make sure you check out gspn.info for the buck stock market uh but crashing by the way it's crashing it's real it's bleeding Doconomics. <laughs> Doc economics are not working for the economics is not working for regular americans it's true <laughs> it, it truly isn't but you you see that it's just you see uh andre jackson jr come in have that massive impact and he's like is he gonna do that all stuff of course he's not gonna do that what are you talking about it's andre jackson jr obviously he, also, he didn't AJ say green's, aj green's defense he was like yeah he's not good but he tries i was like i feel like he's pretty i mean he's been all right compared to the rest of the team you're, yeah look who yeah. else you're throwing out there yeah compared to pat Connaughton, compared to like da- uh malik beasley Daniel beasley has lost me on defense and kind of entirely but certainly on defense Truly, truly, it's it's felt like amazing. he had a good like ten days, and it's just been very poor. Again. It's looking like the end of the Lakers tenure. Yeah, not that extreme yet. He's still going to be a. He's still going to start. He's going to start for the playoffs. He uh, got in foul trouble in this game, and I was like, "Please, God, a couple more." <laughs> just so we don't have to see. Uh, but the Bucks, they don't have the. They just don't have the bodies. They don't have the depth to do it. And Doc is just going. He's going to throw out these lineups no matter what. Like he he's obviously Marjan Bochamp is someone who's been hurt uh, recently. He did not was not active for this game, so this was not a possibility anyway. But him, Andre Jackson Jr., who did get some run during this Knicks game, they've he just four minutes. Yeah, he so, did not get some run. Yeah, also some the run. game before the Raptors game, I think he checked in as well. Is that like Grizzlies? Maybe I'm going to be I, honest. I'll, I'll, I did not watch that Grizzlies game. Good for you. I um, was I what 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 day was that? Was that Wednesday? I was out at a Balkan small plates restaurant. I'll tell you what, and it was delicious. I was doing better things than watching the the Bucks versus the Grizzlies. Thankfully for that one time. Let me let me pull this up because I think it was the same in that game, or maybe I'm just thinking of earlier in the Raptors game. Um, oh no, but, yeah, he played seven and a half minutes. So Ty Ty played in that game too. And they both got like fake tenure, like fake run. Like they were out there for one stint. They played okay. Uh, Ty Ty was on the ball a bit. He was okay. I mean, he had two rebounds, one of two made shots. And it was like, okay, finally we're seeing a point guard besides backup Pat Connaughton and never got to play again. Knocked down his only three, which was nice. Ajax just rebounded and missed some shots at the rim. But it's like a fake tenure, a fake run. And then he gets to actually play against the Raptors. Clearly helps the Bucks a bunch with his just energy and what he did for the team. And he gets four minutes in this. I think some of that was garbage time, too. I think he was in with that group that played a minute at the end of the game as well. How? Doc Rivers, baby. I just, I don't understand. Like, it's all does going it, to big PC. Does that make sense in any, in any way? No. Like, truly. I mean, he said, that this is, again, the Doc thing. He goes... We just have to figure out how to play at a faster pace with more energy. I was like, we just what's the other athletes out there? What the fuck are we doing? Like, played, that was, how, how else are we gonna play faster? Well, you know what? I you what I'm gonna do? I want to play faster. I'm gonna throw out my nine year old grandpa out there. <laughs> like, you know what? If I want to play with pace, let's throw out people who can't run. Let's do that, Doc. Let's do that, Doc. By the way, we're not calling you Doc Rivers anymore. We're calling oh. you Mister Rivers. 
We're calling you Glenn. You're Glenn, by the way. No, We're not. No, I'm, just, I'm making I'm a declaration. No, he's no, not I'm Doc like, Rivers anymore. He's Glenn. Mr. Rivers is better, I think. <laughs> Mr. Rivers. Mr. Rivers sounds so creepy. He's Mr. Glenn Rivers now. You're not Doc anymore. That's gone. That's taken away. Your fake medical license has been revoked. You're not like if you can't even figure out how to play faster player than a basketball court, there's no way you could have graduated from medical school. There's yeah, just you can't diagnose the Bucks issues. Yes, the exactly. Is gone. Mr. Rivers. It's Mr. Glenn Rivers now. <laughs> Fucking hell, oh, man. That's just... bad. Oh. I'm so frustrated with this team, Todd. It's hard not to be. I'm so frustrated. It's been, it's, this is the story of the season, and it sounds a little silly because they have 47 wins or whatever, but the story of the season. That's, really that's bad. Like, that's bad, well, Todd. There's four games left, and you have 47 wins, and you want to be a title contender. I know. But that's I mean, bad. That's not I, good. I know. I know. I know, Rohan. But, um, what was I going to say? Oh, I'm looking at the wrong screen. Uh, do you know in April they're 0 and 4 and they're still only 25th in net rating? That's so bad. <laughs> and one of the teams worst is OKC. Uh they've had they've had OKC uh Shea and uh J Dub out for a couple games. That makes sense, but damn. Also, the Raptors have a 3.4 worse net rating, and they're 2-2 two and two to the Bucks 0-4. Oh Amazing. You yeah, love to one see of that. The wins, one of the wins against the Bucks. Just you know shoot me in the head, Ty. Just, like, just... Glenn Doc Rivers would die. No, Mr. Mr. Glenn Rivers. M Mr. Rivers would give you an aspirin and put you back on the bench to trot out Boss Man or Employee Boy for some more run. I don't like calling him Employee Boy. That feels wrong. <laughs> I know, it's weird. I'm not going to do it again. Bobby Porter's played well in this game. 10 for 15 from the field. He does. He's, he's one of the, he's the, the bright spot of this game. Like, And they lost. They lost to Bobby Porter's 67-67 shooting performance. They lost his minutes despite him scoring 24 points on 15 shots by 11 points. They just got, and it's not his fault. It's not his fault. I've, by the way, we I've, have a Chris, we have a Chris Middleton update. Oh, what's the update? So, Bucks uh, Chris Middleton is with a dentist for oral surgery after taking a shot to the mouth yeah. in the first half versus the next. Uh, quote, Mr. Mr. Glenn Rivers, <laughs> he just can't catch a break. And honestly, I feel bad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, Mr. I agree with Mr. Glenn on that one. Like Chris, he, he would Chris. rather play. He would rather play Chris high off his ass on laughing gas than Andre Jackson Jr. <laughs> Chris is going to be out there giggling. <laughs> And uh, Ajax just on the bench. No, he kind of played boss about... man. I am laughing against the Andre. Oh, for sure, yes. <laughs> Pat C could be actively getting oral surgery. He'd be in, out there in the corner. <laughs> he'd, be, he'd, be there, he'd be like, you know what? The dentist counts as another player. You know, <laughs> we're trying to play six on five. We're trying to manipulate the rules. It's like, bro, that's a dentist. Like he's actually <laughs> performing oral surgery. Like you could kill Pat here. It's like, is, hey, is it's this, six. We gotta this, take it. You gotta take the advantages you can get, man. Doctor Doctor Dave's Bucks debut. Isn't he a dentist? No, he's a. Is he a? He works for Children's Hospital, I believe. Oh, I thought he was. A, I don't know why I thought he was a dentist. Um, but yeah, shout out Doctor Dave. Uh, yeah, doing nothing actual, to say bad about actual him. great work. Yeah. Um, unlike the Milwaukee a real, Bucks, a real doctor. Yeah, a real doc. Fuck you, the only Mr. Doc Rivers. In the Bucks, yeah. and Pfizer, I acknowledge. <laughs> exactly. And, and there's probably some Bucks doctors too, but yes, they're the medical staff is top tier. Yeah. Uh, yeah. but yeah, I mean, we we I've done my rant about Doc. What else do we need to do? Um. Well, I'm so torn because I feel like it's been so bad. I'm already like have half an eye to like what what do they do about it in the summer, but I don't want to do that before the season's over. A tiny, tiny part of me still thinks they could figure it out. So I guess let's do like, what What do they have to prioritize? Damian Those... Lillard. <laughs> no, I want to like, yeah, I suppose, yeah. But what, what, is that, what does that mean? I don't do whatever you need to do to get that man right. <laughs> Do they have to wear red jerseys? They might have to rebrand and be full red. They might have to be a buck in the Portland Trailblazers uniform. They might have to move, like just transform the inside of Pfizer to the Moda Center. Is, I think that's what it's called. An, there, yeah, there's an account out there that's like Blazing Buck, I think. And it has been around for much longer than Dame to the Bucks. That, that person would just be like in heaven. Like finally, just come together, bring them together. 
Yeah, I mean, might as well. <laughs> like, make whatever you need to do happen. They got to spruce up his Milwaukee man cave. They got to do something. Like, just if you need to if fly his house from Portland to Milwaukee and just put it somewhere, do it. Put it where I live. I don't care. <laughs> like, Glo- Glorilla season tickets? Yeah, might have to. That's super. It's like two games. That's super affordable now. Yeah, just two. And, and all of the playoff games. So four games? Yeah. No, I think they'd get to five. I think it'd be five games. I think they'd get to five. Hopefully. Um, what would your ideal rotation be against Boston on Tuesday? Assuming Chris can play. What do you, what do you think? Is that, That's probably realistic. I right? think you run in eight-man rotation. Well, first the Chris, but you think he plays Tuesday? I think he does. I, would think, I mean, it sucks. I'm sure it's going to hurt, but I would imagine... You know, he'll be we'll maybe see. maybe I mean, he's, we, we see Mass Chris. Yeah, that, that could make sense. Oh yeah, my God, Mass Chris against Boston would go so hard. It would. That that might be the maybe, greatest player maybe, of all time. Maybe that's what snaps the Bucks out of this. Maybe instead of being like you know the Michael Jordan cycle where it's like Chris plays bad and then he's prime Michael Jordan, then it's like oh it's fine. Uh, maybe he turns into just prime LeBron James. Maybe he plays like he's actually six eight. You know, <laughs> like, that would be fun. maybe he just starts dunking on people. Imagine the first possession, Chris just okay, goes and yams, lost, yams it on Porzingis. <laughs> you know, like, I think I would just turn off the game and you just would... never watch the Bucks again. I think I'd be like, "This is it. It's not going to get better than this." <laughs> uh, how are we going to do the pod then? I think there's a lot of people who talk about the Bucks who've never watched. So I'll just. Like but we that. can't be one of we can't be those people. I though. I'm I'm obviously not going to do that. Somebody asked me late in was it Raptors or maybe Grizz like why are you still and I was like someone's got to see how nasty this gets. I won't turn them off. Someone's got to document this. Someone has to be the bearer of what is happening here. Otherwise, it'll be lost to history. Exactly. But the, what players would you play? Yes. So I do the normal starting five. I do Bobby, I do AJ Green, and I do Andre Jackson Jr. No PC whatsoever. No PC. No oh, PC. Wow. Eight man rotation. You're athletic. You have guard depth. You have big depth. That's what. What else do you need? Like maybe maybe if you want to throw a boss man in there, that's okay. Like you're playing boss man over PC. I'm playing boss man over PC. Man. Oh, I'm playing PC over boss man. I think I just trust boss man. I actually no. That's a that's a wild sentence. I think I want to put I'd rather put neither of them in there than one of them. You put his whole name in superscript on the stock tweets and you want to play him over. That was you. I know you made Oh wait, that was me. That was you. Yeah, that was me. Oh, Gaslighter. <laughs> that was me. That was I, me. I, I apologize. Know how to do that. I'm older than you. I don't know how I was like, I don't even know how he did that. That's incredible. That's incredible. I think that was everyone's take. Uh thank you. I I was trying to I was trying to give you credit, not gaslight you. But uh Yeah, thanks. Uh, uh I would switch up the starters. Really? What's your starting lineup? Uh, that's the issue. I have no idea. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> just switch it up. Giannis, you're off the bench now. No. We're starting Thanasis. We're still starting into Tedakupo. I think I would try AJ Green over Bees. Just to see what happens. I mean, I'd yeah, like to see of, it. Just to see of. because have we we haven't seen a lot of negative AJ Green. We've seen some times where he doesn't have a shot. We've seen some times where he gets just bullied on the other end. But we've seen that happen to Malik Beasley and Jay Crowder more. <laughs> yeah. I, I, like, and Pat. I, I, and the funny thing is, like, I'm not I'm not as confident as a lot of people. I don't think AJ's had the best run this month. Like, I think he also has not played great. And to be clear, like, Andre Jackson Jr. hasn't been amazing. But he did give them a lot of necessary energy. I would not start him. I do think the spacing is just way too bad. I think you need a shooter in that two guard, but I would try to start AJ Green and just like see what happens. I would consider I just wish he hadn't been so bleh lately. I think boss man does make sense, this combo that we've had a hundred times. I think that the defense of that unit is so bad. At least the perimeter defense of that unit is so bad. And they just have but but the issue with him is I already kind of think like Chris needs to guard bigger players. I think boss man should be guarding bigger players. And again, this comes back to like they're old. They're just old. Like ideally, you would stash Chris and Bossman and maybe even Dame on like a slow forward, you know, who's just kind of out there. And the Bucks need to put two of those guys on like good players basically every night. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's the that's the but thing I with just, I would just try something to try something. At the, and maybe that's stupid because they did look pretty good in the first half when they had their starters. But uh, you're just a picture. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Just keep talking. Okay, uh, that was that was unnerving. Um, so maybe it's not right to try and change. And, and Beasley wasn't bad today. I mean, he made three of his six shots, all were threes. He had three assists. Uh, he did have the five fouls, but... Uh, wasn't able to do much about Brunson, but neither was everyone else. I, I don't want it to sound like I'm just singling out Beasley. It's more, and again, I think maybe it's silly because they just haven't had their team for a lot of this. It's more just trying to shake things up and see. But it's also concerning I mean, again. It's, it's, it's also it, the, it's also the personnel though. Just to just to cap off that conversation about you're not trying to single out Bees, but he's the guy that makes the most sense, right? Because what oh, are you going to yeah. do? You're not going to bench Dane. You're not going to bench Giannis. You're not going to bench Chris. You're not going to bench Brook. Like maybe you do I'll bench be, Brook. Maybe you do bench work. Maybe you play Giannis at the five. Bob, we'll bring in Bobby to let him do some big stuff. Maybe. But stretch out more? You could. I mean, it's a possibility. But, We've seen Doc close a lot of games like that. Yeah. I and mean, it hasn't was, worked Brooke out. Pretty, but Brooke, Brooke, Brooke was pretty good in this game. Yeah, I'd say he was, he was above average. He didn't get an up stock, but he was above average. But I don't know if that really – I mean, that's not – I don't think your defense is getting better if you start Bobby Portis for Brooke Lopez. No. You get – you move more, but it's not – that's the thing. I mean, you're, like your rage over Bobby getting his first Bucks alley-oop last week or this week is like, yeah, it's not like, you know, he's not that vertical threat to defenses. I mean, you're just changing where your big guy isos. Yeah. Like the the deep threes that we roll our eyes with with Brook become sixteen foot fadeaways over six foot seven guys. That's so. They, they don't really have like they don't really have a stylistic switch they can make. No, they don't have like a John Henson type. They're just anywhere on the court. Yeah, I mean, like you could get less space. Uh, you could switch Beasley for Crowder or get less spacing, but like that's not f- going to really functionally change much of your. It's going to probably make things worse. At least, certainly on offense. On defense, maybe a wash. Maybe better. Yeah. I just, it's just trying to come up with different machinations of this and none of them really being that effective just makes me sad. Yeah. It does. And that, I think that's just indicative of this whole team. It just makes me sad. And I'm sure a lot of other people, but me specifically. That's. <laughs> I think Isaiah Jackson would have changed our lives. I'm going to shoot myself. <laughs> with a nerf gun <laughs> i'm trying to think of like the least acclaimed player that i think could have really saved this team isaiah jackson's up there i love isaiah why jackson. isaiah jackson you know isaiah what jackson. you know what ty you know what makes me upset you know who you were really I'm big right. on uh cool. last year in the draft who would have helped this team a lot uh last year and no, i actually don't know walker kessler oh that was two years ago now Oh, two years ago. Two years ago. My bad. My bad. Not but not yeah, this past yeah, season. The season before. So yeah, he I, I, he changed the way I look at prospects, too. I'm doing a lot of draft scouting right now because watching college men's basketball is somehow less miserable than watching the Milwaukee Bucks. That's where we're at. And Did you watch the women's game today? Oh, oh yeah. my goodness. That, those games are awesome. I'm saying the men's game, I struggle through for the draft part of it because anything's better than thinking about the current Milwaukee Bucks, who are Fair. a factory of sadness. Um, but Shout out Don Staley in North, uh, South Carolina. Yeah, new new dynasty. Do you know what the craziest graphic I saw? Because they they obviously they went undefeated, won the title. Yep. Top for the tenth time, six of them were UConn. Six are UConn. Yeah, <laughs> just... I I think they should actually say like the fourth non UConn time. I think that makes it more impressive. Yeah, it honestly does. It's fun. Don Staley ran off three chips in like four, four or five years. 2017, like, wow. 2022, and this year. Uh, so a little more, yeah, in seven years. And it's like, man, that's a great you know, coaching performance. You look at the list, and Gino's got 11. Crazy. You got it a crazy. They had a chokehold on the sport. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's a, after the UConn-Iowa game, there's all these legendary players who are mad about the call. Most, look it up. Yeah. They all played for UConn. Yeah. That's the issue with UConn's chokehold on basketball. It's like, oh, Stewie hates Most, the call and, you know, thinks that Kalen's good or whatever. And Sue Bird and Diana Taurasi think it was a bad Diana Taurasi is just hating a lot. Yeah, she is. She's old. She's uh, crouchy. She's not even that old. I mean, in, in basketball. Yes, for player, sure. For sure. Um, I, don't, I don't mean she's an old person. I yeah. mean, she's a 
played a I, long time. Uh, Iowa game. UConn most watched ESPN uh, basketball game. Do you think that the championship will do more? I'm not sure it will. I don't know. I genuinely don't know. I hope it does. Honestly, I don't know about the timing. I like two p.m. is kind of two p.m. Central was crazy. Game. Yeah. Right, we should talk about the Bucks again. We but this is so much more fun. <laughs> I, I did Nick's film school preview pod yesterday, Saturday morning. And I opened it trying to talk about how fun the Bulls have been. And Andrew Claudio had to stop me. He's like, we're here to talk about the Bucks." He's like, you see what I tried to do? You see where we're at? I was like, man, those Bulls have been chippy late in games. The Bulls. So sad. I'm looking at double big lineups of Nikola Vucevic and Andre Drummond like, that looks fun to root for. Do you now? Do you know how disgusting that is? It's it's bad. I that mean, Bulls be, fans hate Vooch. So. That would be on the NBA fan equivalent of the ASPCA commercials. <laughs> They'd be playing the arms of the Angels, watching me like looking over, look like the like, cameras behind me, and I'm looking at a screen of Andre Drummond getting a rebound and kicking it out to Vooch. And Sarah McLaughlin's <laughs> like like your heart. You can you feel your heart breaking while you see it. That's where I'm at. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be a this is gonna be a fun postseason, isn't it? Uh, no, I don't know if I'm gonna make it through to the postseason time. I mean, we're really close now. Okay, so here's here's let me let me ask you this: What do you need to see? You said that there's a tiny, tiny sliver that you can see the Bucks figuring this out in the postseason. You say there's a tiny part of you that thinks that could happen. What do you need to see in the last four games for you to make that PC you get even bigger? I mean, I hate to oversimplify it, but it really is just like Damon Giannis. It's like not. It's Giannis, not oversimplifying, honestly. If Damon Giannis figure their shit out, they can beat anyone. I, I don't love their chances of it with the way the others, quote unquote, are playing right now. But it's that simple. I mean, that's been the premise the whole time. It's that's the. It's what happens here. Yeah, it's what happens when you get. Them. Two theoretically, I mean, one is obviously that, but two theoretically yeah. top, top level guys is, hey, if you have two of these guys, you can do anything you want. So I get where you're coming from. I don't necessarily think that's completely oversimplifying things because, yeah, you're right. That's been the goal all along. They've had 78 games now to try to figure that out. Obviously, they don't have a total of 78 games, but you know what I mean. They've had the season yeah, up to this point. Pretty good amount of games together, too. It's not like it's been none. I know, but they have missed games. I don't know but the yeah, exact total. Missed. I'll pull it up. Uh, but you just, you, you've had this season up to this point thus far to try and figure it out, and you haven't. And if if you think it's going to happen in four games, I, I applaud your optimism. And you know what? Like, I wish it, I, I hope it happens. I just don't think it will. I think this is probably going to be something where you come back in the offseason and say, hey, let's put in a full offseason. Dame, you're coming to Greece with me. Glorilla, if you want to come too, you can come too. But we're going to Greece and we like we're we're just we're putting in the work on the court. TA is there too. Uh Alex Costas they are there too. Francis is providing the music. Everyone's happy. And Marjan. Marjan's there too. You know, Ajax is there. I know Giannis loves coaching up Ajax. AJ Green's there too. Grayson Allen's the there best. just like he was there for the Adrian Griffin presser. You know, Goran Dragic, Myers Leonard are back too. You know, they're there as well. Everyone's in Greece. It doesn't matter. As long as Jamin Giannis figure this shit out this offseason, I think this it, that's that's where I'm at. I just think with the ages of them and everyone else and the second apron stuff coming in, that's just so bad that that's pretty much where they likely are. That's why I can't give up on it yet, just because I do feel like, I mean, you just don't have enough windows to just pump one. And they did. I mean, they did accidentally by hiring Griffin, and just the whole offseason just didn't work at all, basically. Um, but I just think, forget the Dame and the rest of the, just Giannis alone. I mean, uh, he looks great. I think he's going to be very, he's going to be great again next season. But he's like, what, is he 29 now? He turns 30 next season? I mean, you don't, you can't waste these years, and that's probably what's happening. They played 64 games together. The Bucks are plus five and a half, I think, when they're on court and 27 minutes per game in that time, which is, like, very pedestrian. Yeah, you would think you'd be way higher for a duo of their caliber. Yeah. You'd hope. <laughs> You would you would hope indeed. Um, 
So yeah, it's tough. I mean, obviously the Dame thing, it's it's made Giannis a lot better around the rim. I don't, I, it not, hasn't made him better, but it's helped his efficiency in, in that area, I think. But I think now we're into a point where teams are just like back to loading up on the rim. Yeah, like, because they they just like it, it was funny because earlier in the season it was they were too scared of Dame where they were like, okay, Giannis, you you beat us, and he was beating them. <laughs> he was putting yeah. them in the baskets, and now teams are like, okay, Dame beat us, and Dame's out there just trying to think. You know what? Maybe Dame needs to make. When's the last time Dame made music? He needs to release more music. There was a feature coming out, but I agree, he does need to make his own songs. Maybe he just needs to be working on his – he needs to be in the studio. Does he not have a good studio in Milwaukee? Is that the thing? We need to hook him up. How many mad reply guys do you think there would be if Dame put out a song tomorrow? I should. <laughs> like how, how long could he have been whole, like sitting on music and just like there's just not been a good time? Maybe he's just been waiting until he drops like 50 or something and it just hasn't happened. <laughs> If if he had stuff in the bank, he should have dropped it like an all star. I feel like that was a safe time. That was. That's when everything was looking up, right? A yeah. Ch- short month and a half ago ish. All star MVP, three point champion. Oh, we and... thought it was turned around. We thought it was turned around. I Doc was at the that. helm. Pat That's Bev. still so funny. Yeah, the belt's on the other ass now. Yeah, the the it's on the Bucks ass. Don't and belt to ass in glass houses. Yeah, don't. <laughs> this has been a very disjointed podcast, but I think it, it's very it's reflective. It's life. very reflective. I think it's necessary and needed. What else do we need to talk about? Like, is, is the best strategy, not just like what we need to see, because like, obviously we've needed to see Damon and Giannis play well together. Like, that's not as easy as just, like, pushing a button. They need to just run more actions together again. I feel like they were doing that, and then they're away from it. But in terms of, like, what you what do you want Doc to actually do? We talked about the rotation, but, like, is it as simple as just try these young guys and live or die by them because the vets just have not been working for or the whole – oh, it's Doc now, 15 and 17? I think so. Under 500. Two games under 500 under Doc Rivers. Yeah. Like, do you just need to throw him into the fire and pray? I feel like that's probably a better option than... He'll probably tell you all about it. He's like, I was thrown to the fire and told to pray. That's the next no, PR the grabber. Guys. He has to do that to the young guys. I know. That's what he's going to say. Oh, he's going to say, yeah. I think... But, is it, is but it's, it's, it's too... It's not, it's not in Doc Rivers' identity at all to do no. that. Like, that is... I, genu- I can't even fathom that happening. Because that's not who he is. That's why we saw Andre Jackson Jr., Marjan Buchem, phased out of the rotation um, once Doc Rivers took over. Like, we just, we saw no youth aside from A.J. Green. Uh, and, you know, shout out to A.J. Green, man. Just just yeah. keep keep doing what you're doing, man. You're going to be a very important, you might be starting on this team next year. Um, Maybe you should be down the stretch. We'll we'll see. Hey. I, I, I've reached the just try shit portion of the. But the, the thing is, like, I'm I'm with you. I just don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, probably not. Because this is what happens when you have Mr. Rivers, Mr. Glenn. Are we calling him Mr. He, Liver, he did, Mr. Rivers, did, or Mr. Mr. Glenn? Rivers, Mr. Isaiah Livers? He got within less than two minutes less than Crowder in this game. That's good. It's progress, and we saw no Gallo, my close personal friend, who. Just pure vibes out there. Who too? In in Mr. Rivers' fairness, he only plays when they're down a big. Realistically, I just don't know what. But sometimes we'll play him like with Giannis and someone. Yeah, and like, like what? I, I think he played him with Bobby and Brooke at one point. And yeah, it's like if if he's a big, then what is this? I think there was a Giannis Bobby Gallo lineup too. Like his his Gallo. Is Giannis the three? Is is Bobby the three here? What's going Gallo's on? Gallo's the point guard, man. I'm telling you. He's the backup PG. No, <laughs> Pat Bev's out. I feel like I'm pandemic P every day. <sighs> what, it, what what would that be for you, Ty? It would be tsunami T? I don't know. I feel like doing it with a silent T is not ideal. Yeah, I feel like that defeats the purpose <laughs> of the nickname. Tornado T. Pterodactyl T. <laughs> oh, wait, no, that's the opposite. Yeah, it would be, it'd be pterodactyl, pterodactyl P. P. Would be, yeah. yeah. Tornado T. What a T. stupid word. <laughs> pterodactyl. 
dumb. Like, why does it need the P there? Yeah, uh, some etymologist who listens to the show for some reason is going to be like, well, I, please I honestly let us know. Like, I've like, probably looked it up before. I get it with tsunami. I read science stuff at night so I can go to sleep. Because if I think about the bucks, it's going to keep. What me kind up. of science stuff do you read? A lot about space. Really? What black, about space? black holes? Black holes. Okay. What have you learned about black holes? Uh, I've learned they're going to name some after Brooke Lopez. He's been passing a little more. I'll give him he had one <laughs> assist. It's he pretty did. good for Brooke in this game. Yeah. Um, no, I, I, I don't. I can't. We can't do space. We got to do the pod, Rohan. I know <laughs> you want to. I do. I do. I want to too. Um. I'm just trying to think of what else what else to talk about in regards to this team. I, I mean, mean they, t- gotta, t- they gotta get healthy and stay available too. I mean, there's five games left. Four. One of them is a back to four games left. Two of them are back to back, or we, there's one this week, right? Yeah, it's back to back. They play here. I can go through the schedule. Um, I wonder if they punt Boston. They might. I mean, Boston might punt give, Boston. Give give Chris an extra day and then play everyone the second half of it. So you have a home back to back uh Tuesday and Wednesday uh against the Celtics the first half and then the Magic the second half. You play your final two games on the road, Friday against OKC and Sunday matinee against the Orlando Magic. So by the way, the I Bucks mean, clinched a playoff spot. Woo. Yeah, dodge the play in. Woo. So you at most you have three games where everyone's gonna play. And I'm Pat Bev, we don't know where he's got an ankle sprain as well as the wrist thing now. But by everyone I mean the starters or the, the, at least the big three, because we know uh, dental stuff aside, Chris is not playing back to backs, both sides of them. So I wonder, do you give Tuesday off, and then I mean the Orlando game is obviously the more important one for. Uh, I don't think it matters anymore, but playoff seating. I mean, Orlando's coming. Yeah, two. let's let's talk about that. So Orlando and the Knicks are currently uh, three and four, respectively, and they are both one game behind the Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, the the Bucks are forty seven and thirty one. The Magic are forty six and thirty two, and so are the Knicks. The Cavs are forty six and thirty three. So they're only one and a half games up on five. Uh, the Milwaukee Bucks are with four games to play against quality opponents. So I I I remember talking about on the last pod, or maybe it was a, a BR app stream that we that we did, where I was talking about if the Bucks lose the the back to back either game of the back to back about the Wizards or the Grizzlies. I'd be like, what's the point? Uh, now that you've lost four in a row uh, in, in terms of standings, uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what the point is anymore. Like, you could be the five seed. You genuinely could be the five seed by the end of the season, even though there's only four games left. Like, if you're the Bucks and you're currently in two, you have to take this seriously. You have to take these final four games seriously, which they maybe they anything seriously. I was going to say, like, is that even possible? Maybe this is them taking it seriously. Maybe this is the most serious they can get. Like, who I mean, knows? You definitely can't use the serious, like, it, uh, they just don't have, their gear is limited. They don't have gears. They have, like, one gear and it stinks. <laughs> they have one they gear have and it goes, gear. they have one gear and it go and it's reverse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they have one gear and it's into the ditch. <laughs> <laughs> they have one gear and it turns your wheels sideways so you just go back <laughs> yeah so boston is 15 games ahead of the bucks so as much as we'd love to see a good buck celtics game we're not it might it might be the right move to sit like everyone and let those young let, let's see what the young guys can do let them play a bunch against boston see if you can get some valuable tape out of it and then say you know last three games we're gonna get at least a good amount of tape of and not tape reps of Giannis Chris Dame and just do a, against a, a potential playoff opponent like there's a machination where the Bucks and Magic are the four or five like yeah that could be your first round Although playoff it's, series. it's probably pretty I guess if they split the series I was I was gonna say the fact that they play each other complicates it a little bit yeah no for sure I'm assuming that that's under the circumstance that Cleveland continues their little down stretch Milwaukee and Orlando probably split one one and the Knicks went out. I mean, Orlando, they have their destiny in their hands. They they won the season series against the Knicks three to one. They play they have three road games and then their Bucks that, that last Bucks game in Orlando. At Houston on Tuesday. At Milwaukee. It's also a back to back for them. At Milwaukee Wednesday. At Philly. And then it versus Milwaukee. Not an easy set of games easier because the Bucks have been terrible. 
But if they if they go like three and one and they beat the Bucks twice in that stretch, they're probably the two seed. Yeah. Yeah. Unless the Knicks go like undefeated and they they are kind of running on fumes, it feels like right now. So Orlando certainly is going to be very motivated. OKC almost lost to the Hornets because they have so many players out. So we'll see how healthy they are. But they still, I mean, right now are within either half a game or a game of second. They're and, they're one game out from Denver at one. Yeah, so the, I don't think there's going to be many situations where they're looking to to punt uh, a game. Although quietly, like is two. No, you can't game it. No, you can't game. You can't game Total anything close. out of this. No, one is better, I think. Than well, no, because you you just never know who you're going to see. Yeah, there's no way to game it out of um so they're gonna be so boston's the only team on the schedule who's like yeah we probably don't care yeah they probably want to beat the bucks though actually i don't know if they care probably not like they're like hey this is a team we're up 15 games on them who cares yeah i mean it's uh uh, yeah i don't i mean they maybe want to prove something just because they have they've the bucks have played them better than most anybody let's see they sat they only sat um Tatum in today's game against the Blazers. They did win. They were down big early. I think they just probably got bored. Um, but they've been sitting guys. It feels like they have not played with their full six in a little while. I feel like they're kind of just, I don't know how much of it's real, but it seems like there's a little bit of like, all right, we're not going to play anyone too hard right now. Which makes sense. I mean, again, they have literally, they have not had anything to play for in like, what, weeks? Yeah. I mean, they have the the one overall in playoffs locked up too. Oh yeah, for sure. So yeah, there's nothing left for them that matter. I mean, if they want to chase the best net rating or whatever, I don't think they're really close to it anymore. They they fell off, but uh, they have not fallen off the top of the league. That's for sure. No, which makes this even worse. <laughs> yeah, it's just if there's one team you don't want to see, if there's one team, it's Boston. I hate we're in this position where. Like, we might end up just rooting for another team to lose in the playoffs, and that's it. That sucks. I don't like that. It it does not scream, hey, the Bucks have Giannis and Dane. I can't. I just can't. I, I really, honestly, like, I, even more than, like, anger or disappointment, it's just, like, stunned. I'm stunned. If you had told me, what was it, September when they traded for him? Yep. If you had told me, hey, 47 and 31, like, okay, you know, maybe these injuries. And you're going to be sitting there on a pod with your good buddy Rohan, and you're just like yelling at the team and saying they don't try and they stink and they've lost four straight games heading into the playoffs, including three against garbage teams. And they've blown two leads against decent teams in the Knicks and the Lakers. And they have one good win in like the last month. I'd say, oh, that, no way. That, that can't be right. That didn't even happen under the old Bucks where we thought they had all these issues. No. We had no idea what issues were. No, we really didn't. Like I've been, I've been wanting to be like recalcitrant about this, but it's just like I, I just what, what, what'd you say? Re- re- recalcitrant? Recalcitrant? Yeah, I've uh, never heard that word before. Am I tripping? Life. I'm a good word guy. I don't know what that word is. I know. I um, I believe you. You're a very am smart I tripping? Guy. Recalcitrant? Oh yeah. Having an abstainly uncooperative attitude toward authority or discipline. Okay, you had me questioning like whether that's a word or not. No, I've never heard it. I don't, what, what, what was your sentence? Like I've been, I've been being like wanted to be like recalcitrant about like thinking about the Bucks this way. You're uncooperative. Yeah, about like I don't, I like I refuse to think about okay. the Bucks in yeah, this you life. Said perfect. No, I've never heard that word before. Good for you. That's a good oh, one. Well, well, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate yeah, that. Wow, recalcitrant. Yeah, got to add that to the lexicon. Wow. Um, but I, what was I even saying? Like, yeah, I don't want to think about the Bucks this way. But yeah, yeah. yeah it, it's just what it's it's just stunned. I think that's a good way to put it. it it's it's just it's it's a baffling i'm dumbfounded like damian lillard and Giannis tetacupo were supposed to be like that's that's a fever dream you know and now it's reality and it's dog it, shit it turned out to be an indiana fever dream yeah really did picking twice two years in a row or picking picking one two years in a row. yeah except instead of caitlin clark we get i don't even know 25th overall i don't even know a name to say 
Ryan Cam Donald Jones, Virginia. Yeah, sure, Cam Jones. Well, guys, you can sit around and get two minutes while 49-year-old Jay Crowder's out there. I'm just trying to figure out how we can get more dynamic guard play, but I keep putting the Gnosis at point guard, you know? <laughs> like, it's just... It's just... That's how you know I'm down bad when I'm saying that. Tyler Culloch wouldn't be a bad fit. He wouldn't. He wouldn't be a bad fit at all. They, they could use a, a fight with Ty Ty for the number two point guard spot. In it. No, I mean, we all know. Pat Bev's back. Jay Crowder's back. Gallo's back. These are Doc's boys. <laughs> the medical the medical staff. Gallo, congrats on your assistant coaching job. Like, I wish, dude. Oh, man. It's a great guy. Yeah. I, the death. Nothing, nothing against Gallo at all. Nothing against Gallo. Just oh. the way he plays. Yeah. What's, but what's... yeah, he hasn't, we don't need to, he hasn't been playing. It's fine. <sighs> Have we exhausted this? Um, I think for the folk, for just like the idea that they can flip the switch, I think they need to go like three and one and look really good in this last stretch. I don't think there's a world where they limp into the playoffs. Like they continue this, uh, not even limp. I mean, like, dragging yourself over broken glass into the playoffs that they're doing right now and then they're good in the playoffs i don't think that's feasible i don't even know if it's feasible for them to be good in the playoffs from this spot but i certainly think like these next four games to me need to have the intensity of actual playoff it's not for seeding it's not to make the playoffs but i just cannot imagine that you go in not even cold this like zero kelvin into the play marine science stuff and have any sort of success so i think it's like got to be do or die attitude. Now get maybe they don't win as much because they they probably shouldn't play Giannis and Dame these super long minutes. Like I, they could let's say they go two and two, but they look great in the thirty minutes of Giannis and Dame per game. That works too. I just mean like the on play just needs to be better in these next four games, or I, I think they're absolutely cooked. No, for sure they're they're absolutely cooked if we don't see any semblance of life from the Bucks in these games. I mean, this is the time where you have to. I I would I, I said the same thing when you started when we uh, we were talking about that Wizards Grizzlies back to back. These are the times where you're supposed to feed up. This is the time where you're supposed to get right, and they're running out of time. Like again, there's four games left. Like the season continues to drag on and and take years off my life. But it's it's there's still four games left, and they're quality opponents. Let's see what you can do here. The East is so mid. The fact that the Bucks are still in two, it's yeah, it's crazy. What is happening in this? Orlando Magic are like Orlando Magic are like about to be the two seed in the East. Yeah, life has never been better for that. And you got, out west, well, let me look at this. What are the Lakers right now? Forty-five and thirty-three in the nine seed. Forty-five and thirty-three would be just on the door of six in the East right now. <laughs> You like know what's right crazy. there. You know what's crazy. Behind Indiana. You know what's crazy about the Bucks' record right now. So they yeah. got four games left. They got a max of fifty-one wins, right, on yeah. this season. That would be the third, tied for third best record in Damian Lillard's career. Yeah. Yeah, is he sitting here? Like, I don't know what you guys are so upset about. He's like, this, this is great. great. <laughs> like, no, maybe, sure. maybe that's what we're seeing here. <laughs> Maybe it's like, hey, we're winning games. Like, this is a high clip for me. I uh, and then he I, turns it I, on in the playoffs. That's that's your thing. That's that's really the X factor. Is can Dame just be Dame in the playoffs? Yeah, hopefully. I mean, but if he's going to be current Dame, that's not good enough. No, if he's going to be twenty three points on okay efficiency and rely on free throws and seven assists, three turnovers. That's not getting the job done. No, which is unfair because that's really good stats, but it's just when it's when, you, when you're Damian Lillard, that's not good enough I mean, at that's, all. Is that not just Drew Holiday with worse defense? No, Drew Holiday was not that efficient. I said with okay efficiency. Okay efficiency, seven assists, three turnovers. No, that's not that's not Drew Holiday. No, let's do this. Where what would what were Drew Holiday? Say. Let's do it. Drew his, Holiday. Uh, his efficiency was worse than okay. I will I will give you that. Are we but talking play, playoffs? Yeah, playoffs. playoffs. Uh, he averaged 17.8 points last year yep. on 40% from the field, eight assists, uh, 2.4 turnovers. That's better than I expected for an assisted turnover ratio. But some of his shots were turnovers. A lot of his yeah, shots I were agree. turnovers. I, you know, we, we made the same. For his Bucks career, he was 18 and 8. 
uh, with about six rebounds, uh, two stocks. 39% from the field is, is brutal. 30% from three is obviously brutal. Uh, and then 45% from two is okay. His career high for, for the Bucks postseason three-point percentage was 31.6%. Yeah. On six point six attempts per game, like no, it's not. It's not true, Holiday. No, I'm not on that end, and not on the other end either. No, I'd say he's closer to him on the defensive end than the offensive end. Ooh, is that a hot take? Yeah, I don't know if I agree. Defense hasn't been horrible. Yeah, but because we guard him, we 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 evaluate him on the kindest scale. That's also fair, and he's also he, not guarding he, the best player. He pokes a ball loose like once a game. And you're like, there it is, Dame. He turned it on. And then he just like wanders away from another three-point shooter. It's like, oh, okay, that's fine. He's also, yeah, but he's also not guarding like the Apex guy on the other team. Yeah. So yeah, that's unfair. That's unfair. <laughs> we're back to we're back here, Ty. We're back to the Drew Holiday. Bucks, comparison. Bucks point guard is the most cursed position. It truly is. And we'll see what happens with Dame and Drew Holiday face off on Tuesday. Um Oh God. Hey, you know what? Anything can happen, man. Your prediction is they sit a bunch of guys versus the Celtics. Oh, I threw it out there. I mean, they have to. They're they're not going to have Chris for at least one of those two games. Yeah, it's Might kind just... of like a wow. Is this like the make or break of the season? If they if they play Dame and Giannis, yeah. Like I feel like if they got if they got brutalized by the Celtics, I feel like it'd probably just be over right there. I'd say it's I'd say it's if a first half. I'd, I'd say you can yeah. If they try to win and they get blown out. Here's the yeah. thing, though. Here's the thing. I think the Bucks pull a Celtics from uh, earlier in the season, where if they're getting, they're losing. They're not playing in the second half. But that's, I think that's almost worse. I mean, you have, you probably have to for load management. But I like again, I think the the point would have been made. Yeah, but you can also say like, oh, if they played their guys, maybe they could have come back. I wouldn't be saying that. No, I I wouldn't be saying that either. I'm saying you can make that argument. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's. We'll see. We'll see if they take it seriously or not. As long as they're not down by forty, how about that? As long as it's with within twenty and they pull their guys, I'd say it's not the worst thing that's ever happened. No, I mean, we had the last week, but it'd be pretty bad. Yeah, it would be pretty bad. I'm prepared for the worst now, Ty. Well, yeah, I think that's. Uh, I think we're at the worst. Kind of, I think this is the most rock bottom we've been about a Bucks. I'm team. not going to say that because I thought that last time, and then I saw them get closed out by Isaiah Hartenstein. No. In their home court with Giannis and Dame out there. Yeah. They had no answer. No, they really didn't. Who are they going to have an answer for? They had no answer Paolo? for Tyus Jones this season. Paolo, theoretically? No, they're not going to have an answer for Paolo. Giannis? I, are the Bucks going to get there? I mean, it might be first round. No, I'm saying are the Bucks going to get to using Giannis as... If, I, I, oh, I'm just gotcha. like, are they gonna? Oh wow! It seems like Pat Connaughton might be having some trouble with Paolo. Let's get Malik Beasley back out there. Jay Crowder, you can do it. Pat like, Bev, you're getting out there. I don't care. His <laughs> wrist and ankle. He's and, actively uh, in a cast. Yeah, he's in a sling, and he's up. like, okay, guard up. <laughs> yeah, well, I really wanted to play Andre Jackson, but. I just Pat wanted to have told me he was he, it was him. So I said, "All right, I trusted my guy. The, you got to listen to the playoff. You got to listen to the players when it comes." Isn't that to what rotation. you want your coach to do? Listen to the players. I was listening to the players. Pat Pev was Marjan was still in street clothes, and I was telling him, "Hey, you know what? I want you out there." <laughs> <laughs> that that's not realistic. You know what? They told me you couldn't play, uh, Jalen Galloway. I don't care. You're playing anyway. We're breaking <laughs> NBA rules. <laughs> You're not eligible to play in the postseason. I don't care. You're getting out there. I mean, I, what would I happen? Like, what, what would what would be the the recourse I, for that happening? Like, let let's say Doc Rivers just throws he he tries to check in Ty Ty or or Jalen Galloway or someone, and they just uh like the refs don't catch it, and they just get into the game. What happens? I don't know. I wonder if they would like if you won. I wonder if they'd make you forfeit the game. They might. They might. Because like, I mean, yeah, that's a for, pretty big for, rule break. For context, two way players are not postseason postseason eligible. Well, and and there's also like you can only have whatever thirteen guys. I think it is active on a given night. Like if you had a if you had a fourteenth player who wasn't on the list check in, I don't, I don't know what they would do. I don't remember it ever happening. I don't think it has ever happened. But if there's one player is gonna or one person who's gonna do it, it's Mister it's Mister Glenn. 
Not, not, no, but it's not though because they're young players. That's also true. That's the issue with that. With that, I can see Adrian Griffin. <laughs> we need some more burst. Get out there, Jalen. <laughs> Jalen just goes out and dunks on someone. The refs are like, "Who is this guy? Wait, he can't be in the game." <laughs> oh no, we made a massive error. The the, the PA bus, announcer the is just like checking into the game. J- J- Jalen Galloway? <laughs> what? Bucks are closing this game with Giannis, Chris Dame, Chris Livingston, and Jalen Galloway. <laughs> oh man, I don't uh, know what we're. I don't know where we're at. I don't know. What I think. We're I think that's. On. I think we need. I think we need to cut it. Uh, they yeah. need to. They need a Looney Tunes. That's what Doc said about Ajax minutes. <laughs> we need to cut it. Oh, uh, you know what? I just realized what. What will make this all even worse if the playoffs go as bad as where I shouldn't even say as bad as as bad as they're on track to. Mm-hmm. We're gonna get dot quotes after the series. Oh God! At least when they lost under Bud, he would just not say anything. No one would say anything. So preferable to what we're gonna get. You know, I I talked for so many years about hey, I need the I need the Bucks coaches like talk, give inside full answers. Nope, I take it all back. I take it monkey all paw. back. Monkey paw, I, monkey paw, monkey paw. Take it all back. I I don't need Mr. Glenn talking about everything he needs to. Mr. Rivers. Yep. Uh, yeah, Mr. And also Rivers. Giannis is going to get memed to death for that. I'm tired of the disrespect I'm coming. Oh, no. I forgot about that. Yeah. Didn't think it was a good post in real time, but that's not going to go over well. Hey, you know, he might have been talking about whatever. But uh, you know, you never know what the context is. That's true. Ding, ding. Ding. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, we'll say thank you for listening to this episode of the Eurostep here on Blue Wire and GSPN, presented by Prize Picks. Uh, thanks for sticking with us if you're still here. Uh, we're gonna have you covered for all six of the Bucks postseason games this season. Pod coming up. You- another one. <laughs> Wait, Do you think is- John is John Horace a freak in the cap sheets? You look for, you look at the Bucks next season, maybe. Maybe if he can make some magic in the in the in the off season, we'll call him a freak in the cap sheets. You know. Oh, somebody asked me, is his seat warm? What do you think? Rapid fire, mid outro. I don't. Yeah, probably. I think I mean, yeah. It's been about as bad of a twelve month tenure for an executive as Has possible. Milt Newton been the real mind behind this the whole time? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, is Pop, Papa Jimbo is he is he at the wheel now? Is this all because Mark Lazary sold his his stake? He saw the storm coming. He saw, he saw Doc. He saw Mr. Rivers. <laughs> he saw him coming. Uh, no, I think I think it's fair to say John Horst's seat is warm if this season proceeds like I we said, think it's going I to. I said everybody's. Just, Everyone aside from Giannis. No one's got it. I mean, whatever it means for him, they're not going to dump Giannis. But yeah, I think Giannis is warming seats. Put it that way. Yeah, that's a, I think that's a good way to put it. Uh, throwing thumbtacks on him. No one's comfortable. Yeah. That's a horrible thing to do. Put a thumbtack on a seat. Uh, that's like a. That was like a. I think like a semi-popular prank. Like what I know, hell? but like, what is wrong? Like, why would you do that's that? Sick. How would you that's feel if sick. you sat on a thumbtack? Like, yeah. I have you, have you ever thought about that? that? Yeah, yeah. It, it's crazy. Stop. If you're doing that, stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking about like some like miscreant. It's kid, Dash boy. from The Incredibles. Yeah, and he just listens to our pod, and he's like, you know what? They're right. <laughs> Hey, if we've done that, then we, we've been a Maybe successful podcast. Maybe we saved podcast. an ass today. Maybe yeah. we did. Maybe the belt to ass. We we saved an ass. <laughs> you uh, can do belt to ass, but you cannot do thumbtack to ass. Correct. A theoretical belt to ass. <laughs> yeah, only theoretical. <laughs> only Pat Bev belt to ass. Uh, yeah, if you're still here, we appreciate you. <laughs> uh, st- oh. we'll, we'll have you covered for uh, all of the Bucks playoff games. We'll have a pot after every game as this season comes to an end and we ramp up for the postseason make sure you're subscribed wherever you're listening to this podcast platform of choice or watching on youtube make sure you leave a five star rating and review on your podcast platform of choice check out gspn.info for all of our links to all of our podcasts and all of our everything gspn uh at odd random we miss you bud we'll, we'll talk to you next time